People think that the internet is in the cloud. People think of wireless, things going through the air. But the reality is 98% of traffic goes through fiber optic cables. 70% of the world is covered with water. These are fiber optic cables that are laid under the water, and that's why we call them subsea cables. We have a data center in Chile. We need to connect the data center with the U.S. Our products are growing. Our products are more sophisticated. They need uh, more bandwidth. South America is a very costly region. We cannot scale using the existing cables because they don't have enough capacity. They are almost end of life and their costs is very high. Curie is a submarine cable system that Google has built between Los Angeles and Valparaiso, Chile. So it's our first experience on an international private cable. We are going to be able to bring more content to the region. And extend our ability to connect to users in, in that part of the world. Curie consists of about 10,500 kilometers of submarine cable, which is about two and a half times the length between the east and west coast of the United States. In optics, the further you go, the lower the capacity per fiber pair is. So if you take something like Curie, we decided to go with four fiber pairs. It supports approximately 18 terabits per second for a total of about 72 terabits per second on that cable. And spaced out every 100 kilometers along that cable, we have an amplifier, which is also called a repeater in the industry to amplify the signal. As light traverses through the fiber, it loses some of its intensity. So imagine if you did not have a repeater, it just becomes impossible to recover that signal because that signal is now absolutely indistinguishable from noise. The undersea cables basically started out with copper cables. Now it's basically the size of a, a garden hose without armor. So on top of our fiber optic core, there are some armor wires to add strength. And then on top of that is a hopper path, which allows us to power our repeaters and amplifiers. On top of that, you have a protective coating so that you don't have electrical shore to the ocean. There is no adverse environmental impact from submarine cables. They are made of completely inert materials that do no harm to the flora, the fauna of the oceans. There is a short period of disruption during the time of installation or repair, but nature covers it very, very quickly. So we're on board the subcom cable ship Durable. In the distance, you can see the cable factory and that long structure coming down to the ship is called the High Line. That conveys the cable from the storage area in the factory onto the cable ship. Pieces of the manufacturing process are automated and the actual deployment of the cable into the ocean is automated as well. The loading part is the most manual part of the project. No new cable has landed in Chile for over 15 years. So there was not a lot of experience within the government of how to process all the necessary permits or which permits were needed for landing the cable. So we set up a workshop with some of the local authorities to really inform them about why this was important for the country, what were the benefits, what were the risks. We really wanted them to, to feel like they were part of this process, and they were. Installing a base here and the servers and now connecting the cable is a physical and a very material demonstration of a trust in the capabilities that our country has been chosen for this. It means that we are advancing in the right direction. 